If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 1. Okay? Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26. It says like this, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Today I really want to talk about a topic called interruptions. The title would be Life Interrupted. Life Interrupted. Often interruptions happen in our lives. We like it or not, interruptions are part of our lives. I'm pretty sure you face some interruptions in your life. Thinking about interruptions, I want to share a story. There was a little kid who was preparing himself to be part of a Christmas play in his church. And his role was to recite a memory verse about the birth of Jesus. So the verse that was given to him was from the prophet Isaiah, okay? Where the verse says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Heavenly Father, and the Prince of Peace. This was the verse. So he, gets, he prepares himself, okay? But he's anxious, okay? So he thought, if I miss anything, if I forget anything, I need some backup. So what he does was, he makes notes of certain words, okay? And he pins them to his clothes, to his shirt, to his pant, okay? And confidently, on the night of the show, he goes up to stage, okay? And he starts off confidently. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. And suddenly the phone rang. A phone rang in the audience and is totally distracted. He loses his train of thought and he forgets the line. Now he summons up his courage once again and says, okay, I'm going to try again. And he starts off again. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called. He couldn't get it. He's totally interrupted by the phone, phone. So he thought, let me fall back to the plan that I had. Okay? You know, some of you did that in our examinations. <laughs> I don't want to see any hands, by the way. Right? So he said, okay, let me fall back to my plan. So he starts off again confidence. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called. And he looks at his pant and says, Levi's. <laughs> Interruptions can distract us. Interruptions can make us go down. But there are some 
good interruptions and there are some bad interruptions in our lives. You know, recently, we were out at a camp, okay, as men, and one of our team members was playing cricket. And he swung the bat and it fell on the floor. Tore his ACL, had to be operated, and the doctor advised six weeks rest for him. Interruption, imagine. He had all the plans for Christmas. Interruption. And we have interruptions in different ways. Maybe you're going somewhere. Maybe you need to get to the airport to go somewhere, and you're driving on that road, and your car starts to huff and puff, and smoke comes out of your engine. You get stalled, and you can't make it. Interruption. Bad interruptions. But there are some good interruptions, okay? Like, if this building was on a fire and there was a fire alarm, that's a good interruption because your lives are going to be saved. If there was no fire alarm, man, we will be burnt. Good interruptions. There are some good, good interruptions in our life, okay? You were not expecting a gift, but suddenly the doorbell rings and the delivery guy is out there getting a hope. Some of you get that during the season of Christmas. Maybe you are a parent and your son or your daughter calls up and says, Hey, Dad, I passed the exam. That's a good interruption in your life, going through the lives. Or if they are married, they would say, Hey, are you ready to be a grandpa? <laughs> good interruptions, bad interruptions. And the story that we just read, the Christmas narrative is all about interruptions. It's all about interruptions. Think of the life of Mary. Okay? Mary was engaged to Joseph. And she was, they were supposed to get married. And suddenly, the angel of the Lord comes and says, Okay? You're going to become pregnant. And you're bear a son and who is known as the son of God. And it will happen through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now Mary was not expecting that. And definitely it's an interruption in her life. You look at Joseph. Joseph was having the same thoughts. Okay, we're going to get married, have some good life. But suddenly, he's faced this reality of his would-be pregnant even before they got married. Which is not a very good thing, even in that age, even now. In those days, punishment was stoning. I'm glad you don't have that today. <laughs> Joseph thought, okay. And he thought, I'm going to divorce Mary. But he was such a gentle man. He was a man of full of righteousness, full of integrity. He didn't want to dishonor this lady. He didn't want to disrespect this lady. He wanted to leave her without causing a scene. But the angel of the Lord comes and says, Hey, Joseph, that's me. That's God who's doing this. Okay, get on with that. So Joseph had to change. It was an interruption for all the plans. Think about that. All the plans they had for their wedding. All right? So many people plan their wedding so much. You know, I always say this. Um... People want to get married, they always plan for that day so much, but they never plan how they're going to live out after their marriage. They all plan for the day. The day should be perfect, great, it, can, it might be perfect, but they never think about what's going to come after that. And they never plan for that. But we, we, do, we do our careers so well, 25 years we study, but you know what? The marriage is going to outlast all your careers. You don't even bother to look into that study about it. Just Mary and Joseph had plans. Great plans. Probably Mary had wonderful plans. She wanted to have all these parties. Come on, what are the parties? The bridal shower. The haldi ceremony. The mehndi ceremony. Sangeet ceremony. All this, she must have planned all these things for herself. And now she's faced with the proposition that none of them are going to happen. None of them are going to happen. Interruption. 
Joseph also probably thought, okay, I'm going to marry this beautiful girl, have some kids, build a nice home, we'll be happy. None of them is going to happen. And facing with pregnancy and facing with all this uncertainty, suddenly there was a decree issued by Caesar Augustus and saying, everyone should go back to their hometowns and register themselves. Now they had to take a journey, a journey with their condition to go and register themselves. Think about the shepherds. Okay, they were taking care of their flock in the middle of the night. The angel of the Lord appears to them and says, now, there's good news for you. Go and meet this baby. Think about the magi. They're studying the stars. They're looking at the stars and God tells them suddenly saying, hey, it's time to pack your gifts. Get on, saddle up your camels and go on this journey following the star. They didn't plan that. They thought, okay, they're going to study the stars and get some knowledge and wisdom. God says, no, it's just not that. You got to get on that journey. Follow the star. Interruptions. Mary and Joseph, okay, after all this probably once the Magi came, once the shepherds came, visited them, they were suddenly faced with this reality that Herod is going to kill the infant, so they had to run for their lives. You see, all through the Christmas narrative, all were interruptions. 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 And some of us face interruptions like that in our lives. Maybe you are facing an interruption in your life. Think about interruptions. They will happen anytime. They will happen anytime. They can happen anytime. But I really want to encourage us today. In those interruptions, I want you to know God is there. God is there. Sometimes... Interruptions can happen in our own doing, but there are some interruptions that are God's doing. And this was something that God did. This baby was the greatest interrupter of all. Interruption. So how do we handle interruptions in our lives? Why interruptions? Why interruptions? You know, God is definitely moving Mary outside of our comfort zone. Okay, we often think of Jesus as our comforter in times of trouble, and he does that. Okay, he not only comforts the afflicted, but he also afflicts the comforted. You got that? Hope you got that. He also afflicts the comfort. What am I trying to say? Sometimes God needs to do something in your life to shift things in your life. And that's not easy. And God does that so that you can grow. Because you've been stuck. You've been stuck. And we never see growth in our life. God says, I want you to grow. Sometimes you need those interruptions in our lives. God will often take us out of a comfort zone in order for us to help us grow more in Him. Or someone said like this, when you are green, you are growing. When you are ripe, you are rotten. Some of us are in that stage today. And God wants to bring some interruptions in our lives. Just like he brought in the lives of Mary and Joseph. So how do we handle interruptions? How should we see interruptions in our life? Especially when they are brought about by God. I want to talk about five things about interruptions. Number one, interruptions challenge us to get God's take on it. Or interruptions challenge us to see the way God sees those things. You know, the angel came to Mary, okay? And the angel greets her with an interesting statement. It says, verse 28, says, the angel went to her and said, greetings, says, you who are highly favored. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. You who are highly favored, 
And what is this great favor that the angel was talking about? Is it getting pregnant out of wedlock, where the punishment is death? Is this favor, okay, is to give birth not in Stockholm, but in a cave full of animals, animal stink, favor? That's not obviously favor. Favor, is this favor? Is this favored one to run to Egypt to escape a tyrant, a king who was out to destroy infant children? Was this favor just to be the mother of Jesus because Jesus was such a perfect child? Anyone watch the show called Young Sheldon? You can see that. Sometimes perfect childs can cause trouble in families too. Imagine the plight of Mary. He's such a perfect child. And she can't even scold him probably. <laughs> Is that favor? Calling myself, you are most high favored. You are highly favored. Can you imagine that? She has to watch her son from God die on the cross. Is this favor? Am I, fav am I the favored one to see all this? But yet, if you see it God's way, if you God's take on that, she gets to hold the God who made her in her arms. She gets to ponder over the mystery that one day this child will die and make proposition, make providence for all the sins of the world and her sins too. She gets to see her son turn water into wine and some miracles. She gets to see her son raise the dead and be raised from the dead. She gets to see that. She interruption. Sometimes we need to get God's perspective on some of our interruptions. God's promise to her is that she will be called blessed. She will be highly favored for generations. And she has been favored. Sometimes we over-rever her too. Highly favored one. Mary was planning a nice, peaceful life. And her life gets interrupted. But I believe this is what God was trying to tell Mary. Mary, I don't want you to just to have a kid. I want you to have a king. I don't want you to just have, raise a son, but I want you to raise a savior. I don't want to raise a small family, but I want you to raise a big family that's going to come through his son. God had a different perspective. And in our interruptions, can I encourage us today? Get God's view of it. They are harder. We can't see those things. Mary did not see those things too. But the ways of God are different than our ways. God interrupted our plans, but God had a greater plan for her. Number two, interruptions mean the providence of God. It could be a divine movement that God has created to happen in our life so that we have a divine experience with God. The interruptions can help us to see God and experience God in a way probably you and I have never experienced before. Now, the angel came and told Mary, okay? And Mary was greatly disturbed. Verse 29 says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And the angel gives the whole gist of what Jesus' life is going to look like. And Mary is trying to understand the whole thing. And she asks the angel a question. Verse 34, it says, How will this be? 
How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. God's request to Mary seemed impossible. And she points that out. She's telling the angel, angel, I don't want to pick out every detail about it. I know you're saying all these things, but I see a problem over here. I see a problem over here. How, this is, how will this be? How will this be? Because I am a virgin. How will this be? And some of us, when we face it with interruptions in our lives, we ask the same question, how will this be? Or when God tells you something amazing through your prophetic word or through the scripture, and then you keep questioning yourself, how will this be? I can't see that. How will this be? And so many times, some of the interruptions seems impossible for us. Maybe it's a health crisis. Maybe you've just been fired from your job. Maybe a relationship problem. Maybe that's something God is asking you to do. But you say, how will this be? How will this be? How will this be? We often think, I'm a virgin. I can't do this. I don't have the time. I don't have the talent. I don't have the discipline. I don't have the resource. Maybe it's God is asking you something and you come up with all these excuses today. And nothing wrong with that. Angel tells Mary something powerful. The angel says, come on, let's read this together. The angel says, with, with God. Come on, put that. With God. Come on, shout it again. Once more. With God. All things are possible. I have come here to tell all of us today, including myself. Maybe God is asking you to do something. Maybe there is an interruption in your life and you're wondering how this will be. And the word of God says to you today, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. That's the story of Christmas, my friend. Mary said, how will this be? God said, you don't worry about that. You trust me. You trust me, because I will make this possible. But so many times we say, God created the universe, he parted the Red Sea, he raised Jesus from this all great, but my problems, I don't think he understands this. Come on, that's what we say, right? Sometimes we have this picture, image in our mind that God is sitting up in heaven, bringing his hands. I can control the universe, I can take care of the universe, but Joe's problems? Ah, But that's not how God is sitting up there in heaven. He's telling all of us today, with God, all things are possible. He's already made a provision in the interruption. In the interruption. Just trust him. Number three, interruptions call for a response. Call for a response. Now, Mary and Joseph faced with a response. They could have done it either way. Two responses. Mary could have just said, okay, no way. I'm not going to take all of this stuff. It's too much to handle. Okay? Knowing God who has given us the right to choose. Even though he tells us sometimes he gives us the power to choose. So with her power, she could have said, no, God, this is not happening in my life. This is not happening in my life. I planned a great wedding I don't want to be interrupted. Mary could have said no. And probably God would have accepted that no. And he found someone else for that job. Same thing with Joseph. Joseph could have said, okay, this is too much to face. I can't think what the society is going to say to me. Okay? That my future wife is pregnant without me even getting together. And Joseph could have said, hey, I'm going to divorce her. No, angel, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to divorce her. I'm going to save my life. He could have said no. The thing is, my friends, all of us will have a choice to make. We all have to respond to interruptions. And the way we respond is going to make all the difference. And Mary said something powerful. Mary said something powerful. 
verse 38. I believe Mary is one of the bravest women that's there in the Bible. She said yes, in spite of all the things that could have gone wrong in her life. She said yes. Now when God came to Mary and told, you're going to bear the Son of God, it was not a favor. Mary, can you please do this for me? It's not a favor. It was a big ask for Mary. And Mary gladly said, verse 38, she said, come on, let's read that together. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. May your word to me be fulfilled. Another translation says, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your will. Those are the exact same words Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane. He caught it from his mama. Because her mama said, be it done to me. Let it be according to your word. She gave an amazing response, a courageous response, a brave sentence. How many of us, if we were in her place, would do the same? Would do the same. Be it done to me, or let it be to me, according to your word. That was her response. Number four, interruptions can redirect our lives. You know, sometimes interruptions cause us to change our course, change our lives. It can help us to see lives in a different way, in a way that probably we never thought about. It will give you an opportunity. You should take interruptions, not as obstacles, but sometimes as opportunities. But what God might be doing different in your life. Imagine this. Once after all this is done, Mary and Joseph were sitting in their couch, on, in their living home on their couch, and doing whatever they were doing to get entertained, because they, I believe they don't have a TV at that time, to watch some Netflix or whatever. And probably while relaxing, Mary must have looked at Joseph and said, Hey, Joseph, look at our lives, man. Would this all been possible if he said no? But look at this now. We get to be the parents, the earthly parents of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our lives were totally changed. When you respond to God's interruptions in your life, you say, yes, I'll tell you, it might redirect your life. It might not be like what happened with Mary and Joseph, but I'm going to tell you, at the end of it, when you look back and see, it all worked out. Because that's God. That's who He is. Who makes it all things work out for your good. It redirects our lives. New thing. Maybe God's bringing you to something, do something new. Because it's redirecting your life. And finally, the fifth one, as the worship team comes, interruptions help us to see Jesus. You see, this whole story, it's not about Bethlehem. It's not about Mary. It's not about Joseph. It's not about the shepherds and the magi. This story is all about seeing Jesus. That's it. The story is all about seeing Jesus. And all these interruptions happened because they could see Jesus face to face. They could experience Jesus face to face. And I want to challenge you and encourage you today. You're going through some interruptions in your life. I want you to know these are all designed for you to see Jesus like you have never seen him before. So trust in him. Trust in him. Say like Mary, be it done to me. Let it be to me according to your word, Lord. 
Maybe God is asking you to do something today. And you're finding questions to ask. But today, you say, God, let it be done to me according to your word. Mary and Joseph gave a fitting response. And what will your response be today? If God would come and say, I want to be born through you. Mm. I want to be born through you. What would your response be? I want you to be the one who will share my love with someone else. What would your response be? Maybe it will interrupt your whole life. But I'm telling you, you see God's perspective on it. You see God's provision in it. And you respond with a yes. He's going to redirect your lives. And in the end, you will discover Jesus in a way. That's what Christmas is all about. I pray that each one of us will discover Jesus in a way that we have never seen before. Don't lose the magnitude of this story by familiarity. Come on. Don't let the familiarity of this story bring contempt in your life. But let it continue to bring awe and faith and trust. And that's what the angels said to Mary. Not one of this word will fall. If God has called you to do something and He promised you to do something, not one of His word will fall. Not one of His word will fall. If you learn to say yes and to trust Him today. Can we all stand up in His presence today? And I want you to reach out. If that's you today, God, I didn't see that before, but today I see. And all I wanted to do is commit my life once again and say, God, I surrender to you because I want to trust in you, God. Not enough your word will fail. If you didn't fail Mary then, you will not going to fail me today. So I trust in you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands as a sign of surrender and say, God, I trust in you. I trust in you. And you will never fail. And I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I just want to lift up hands. I'm going to stand in faith and pray with you. And I stand in my place to today. Continue to believe, trust in God when interruptions happen in our lives. Come on, if that's you, I just want to lift up your hand high. Say, God, I trust in you. I know you will never fail me. You'll never fail me. So God, even with our hands lifted up, we once again put our faith, put our trust in you, God. And I pray, help us to see the interruptions in our life in a different way, oh God. Help us to see like you see, oh God. Help us to experience your provision during those situations. And help us to respond with a resounding yes, oh God. And Holy Spirit, we need your help to do that today. We need your help, Lord, to do that today. Just as you came on Mary, I pray that you'll come upon us in a fresh way. In a fresh way today, oh God. And help us to put our faith Put our trust in you, God, no matter what. Even though we cannot see it, but like Mary, we will say, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. And we praise you, Jesus, for that today.